Alright, hi everyone. Welcome by the next episode of uh, Ecosystems uh, Unpacked. Uh, today with two special guests, um, Maarten Bos uh, from Mozameet and uh, Jonathan Theo from uh, Health of uh, Food Valley. Sorry, Health Valley, Food Valley. Um, yeah, so talking today about, uh, I would say, the growth of startup scale-ups in the agri-food sector, uh, focus on internationalization of it, getting in large sums of investments. Um, let's start with you, uh, Maarten. So how did you end up here at this table? Yeah, because of your friendly invitation, of course, but uh, I, I guess that's not your real question. Um, how did it, I end up in my, in my current role? Uh, my background is not in, in food or in biotech. Um, the company I now work for, Mosa Meat, is developing cultured meat. So that is kind of a food biotech play. Um, and my background is in engineering. I, I studied in, in Delft and afterwards worked in, in technology companies and, and ran um, a few of them. And uh, after I sold the last company I was, I was leading, I was thinking, you know, what do I want? with my life and I wanted to run a company and I wanted to do it in an early stage and I wanted to do something with a positive impact in the world. And um, I had lots of coffee with lots of different people uh, and then uh, someone told me about uh, Moza meat and, and the concept of cultured meat and I was so, you know, in, in, thrilled about this concept. I just wanted to, to learn more and contribute. So long story short, I had talks with the founders and they uh, expanded their team after they raised their series A. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was part of that team expansion as the new CEO. So what is so intriguing about cultivated uh, meat or food? It's, or? it's intellectually extremely challenging because yeah. it's a very difficult uh, task um, ahead. It's um, so uh, it's it's uh, supplying a solution that that uh, you know can help solve some of the world's you know major challenges that we face today. It's uh, an impact on climate change that the current uh, um, you know agricultural industry has, uh, specifically intensive uh, animal agriculture, um, food safety or security, uh, both topics that are that are relevant. Uh, the population is growing. How are we going to feed? Mm -hmm. 10 billion yeah. people 20 years from now. Currently, the, 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 the food production system is already unsustainable and, and highly inefficient. Um, uh, you know, future pandemics, uh, zoonosis, th those are all very relevant topics. Yeah. And cultured meat, by taking the animal out of the equation when producing meat, is just a very good idea. Yeah. And meat alternatives are also a great idea, but they're not catching up. Uh, and probably not suitable for all hardcore, uh, you know, meat addicts. Yeah. And there are a lot because of them. I wanted to ask about that because um, um, you are solving sort of a problem from where still people want to eat meat. If you take that out of the equation, yeah. Why? Why is that? Uh, why aren't we doing that, or should we be doing that well, in the future? A lot of people are putting effort into yeah. that, and and I think that's great. But uh, to be honest, I'm a bit skeptical in changing people's habits. I just look at myself. I know exactly what the effects are uh, of eating meat, and I eat a lot less, yeah. but I still eat and meat. You eat it, yeah. So that's that's uh, I'm my own target group, I always mm -hmm. say. Uh, but it's I think the core of the issue, and I think changing people's habits because I am, for instance, decreasing my meat intake. Mm -hmm. uh, but changing that, I just don't think we have the time as a planet. Yeah. And if we can replace the product. If we can replace meat with meat, yeah. but then just produce in a way where you don't have all the negative externalities, yeah. perfect. Because can you can you elaborate a little bit on that? Like uh, the 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 what if you look at the, the like the sustainability side of things, right? I can imagine like what they said. Yeah, let's let's uh, make, use um, uh, soya or other stuff, and then that also yeah becomes another problem. Can you explain a little bit also uh, in general, like with, with cultivated meats, what, yeah. what is that footprint later on if, you, if yeah. you put it on a really large scale? Yeah, so there's, if you look at the current way meat is produced, uh, I guess a core of the problem is that a cow, we're focusing yeah. on beef because yeah. um, uh, it's, it's one of the three big meats, uh, chicken, pork and, and cow, but they, um, their contribution to climate yeah. uh, changes is, is the biggest of them all, and it has to do with uh, you know the fact that they uh, 
you know, burp and fart and yeah. methane comes. <laughs> we all know the the the, the 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 story around it. But they're very inefficient when it comes to converting nutrients into meat. You know, uh, they're only converting fifteen percent of nutrients, which is yep. just inefficient. Yep. If you can increase or improve that conversion ratio, and with our, uh, uh, you know, our technology doesn't burp and fart <laughs> it's a, it's a lot more efficient yeah. and that is how much more do you think in, well, in, the, in, the in theory we could all, almost reach you know almost a one to one ratio we're currently already you know at a, a, a we're above 60% wow. where a, yeah. a cow is 15% so wow. it's it's increasing and we have a lot of optimization of the technology ahead of us and, uh, and the more we optimize the lower the cost can be and the more competitive it can be with yeah conventional meats, but also, uh, you know, the footprint decreases. And if you look at, you know, footprint, there's a couple of metrics there. It's land use, it's water use, it's greenhouse gas emissions or CO2 yeah. equivalent emissions and energy uh, usage. So um, in all four metrics, uh, we've contributed to independent studies and, you know, the, 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 the improvements are off the chart. It's land use, it's, you know, up to the 98% less yeah. because we just don't yeah. need all those fields and where soy has to be produced or where, you know, uh, we can we can prevent rainforest from being cut, to put it yeah. dramatically, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's true. Uh, water equal because you have to grow the soy, etc. Uh, and and have to, have to uh, use uh, water, clean water in a lot of uh, steps in the process. Greenhouse gas emissions, we already talked about. Um, cows being a producer of uh, methane, which is really, you know, 25 to 85 times more, yeah. Yeah, you know, worse for, for uh, compared to uh, as, as, as CO2. Um, then, and then we have um, energy. And that depends basically on the way you um, set up your, your technology um, and the way how you source your energy. So let's say apples to apples, we both use green energy yeah. or uh, then we are 30 to 70 percent more sustainable, depending on how warm your technology and your bioreactors have to be, etc. Where do you produce? If you're in a cold country, you have to use more energy yeah. to heat up your bioreactors, etc. So, but anyhow, it's a big improvement. Yeah. Is this also the, the 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 first question or the biggest question you get asked? Like, uh, is it more important that you say, yeah, we are better for the environment and we do it like we reduce CO two, or is it something else? No, it it, it depends. You can, a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of levels of knowledge yeah. currently, and. It, that's perfectly understandable. You know, uh, two years ago, I didn't know what, what uh, this was all about. Yeah, I was yeah. just intrigued by, you know, oh, we can take the animal out of the equation. Yeah, I get that, you know, getting soy from Brazil to feed our pigs here yeah, or whatever, yeah, our cows yeah, here, yeah. and that that's not efficient. Uh, I also get that I love eating a hamburger. So, wow, if, if something can replace uh, one part of it, but can, it can maintain the other part, Sounds great. So you get a lot of different levels of knowledge. And, you know, last year I was uh, raising our um, our Series B fund uh, funding. And you talk to a, then you talk to a lot of new people, uh, investors, uh, people who are involved in, in due diligence. And you get all sorts of levels of questions and they all go through the same cycle. Like, oh, first, you know, what is the impact? Is this really going to work? Yeah. How is the taste? Uh, is it a convincing product? And then okay, how is this going to be working at a large scale and what are exa exactly the cost of goods that we can achieve? Yeah. So it's, it's, you see that the more people know, the more questions they get, but slowly they see that, oh yeah, yeah, this does make sense. Makes and sense it's yeah. pretty early stage, yeah. but um, you know, we have fantastic people in the team who have, who have been thinking about this for 20 years almost already yeah. and come with relevant backgrounds and you know, it just makes sense. We just have to, to uh, uh, you know, still do a, a ton of work and build up an ecosystem. Yeah. And that's not only us, but that, yeah. that's also partnering with yeah. the right companies uh, to, to, you know, set up a supply chain of nutrients to feed to our cells, to go to market part, etc. It also to be built up. So, Jonathan, what, what do you think when you hear this? What is uh... yeah, interesting? Yeah. Yeah, obviously, it's, it, it's one of the big things going on. And... Um, like Marta says, you don't really know where it's going, yeah. and and um, you see different companies and, and uh, taking different routes 
to, to fight the same problem. Um, and in the end, the solution will be a formula of different solutions. Yeah. And, uh, and that's why it's exciting because uh, you need all these different solutions and at the end, consumers will choose uh, what's more suitable for their lifestyle, uh, whether they, you know, take meat out of the equation at all. Yeah. But at the end, I, I agree with Martin that it, it's not one solution. No. There's no big bang in, in uh, the protein shift. Like there's no big bang in, in most things. Oh. So, so how did you end up here saying this? Uh... <laughs> um, well, the funny enough, uh, pretty similar story to, uh, to Marta, but I took a different route. Um, after I sold my company, by the end of 2018, uh, I was a founder and um, of Dopio Espresso, so I built an espresso bar chain. So I'm from food, but yeah. more from food service. service yeah. um, I sold my company and to my business partner, and I traveled for about six months, uh, getting my head right. What, what's the next step? I knew I didn't want to do the same thing again uh, because that's what people know. You can, so yeah. they yeah. call so you, can you help me yeah. with building a brand or building a chain? And I thought, no, I want to do something else. And during our travels, um, we end up, ended up in Africa again. I love Africa. I've been there a couple of times. And it hit me that a lot of the problems we face all come down to our food chain and our food system. So I came back and I thought, okay, I, I want to get involved with a company or start a company that you know, as part of this solution. Mm -hmm. And while I was having coffees with multiple people and, and, and getting my bearings, what's going on, um, I got in contact with Food Valley and, and started reading what they were doing. And I didn't know that I was actually interested in the food transition. I had never heard of that word. <laughs> never heard of protein shift, uh, circular agri-food, all these uh, terms were new to me. But I thought, wow, there's apparently an organization um, that helps build this ecosystem. And they were looking for somebody to, uh, to lead the entrepreneurship part. And I thought, wow, maybe that's an interesting angle. Uh, I can take my experience as an entrepreneur, help other entrepreneurs and building the system in which yeah. uh, entrepreneurs can have the largest chance of being successful and I thought okay if you if impact because I wanted to have impact I had a similar list impact I wanted to work with uh, great people uh, with purpose and I thought well all these things I can have here uh, the only thing I, I don't build my own company yeah. uh, so I was quite pragmatic and uh, tomorrow a year ago uh, I started in this position wow nice so it's still yeah. Yeah, I would say oh, yeah. April first. April first. April first. Yeah. It's not, it's <laughs> not a joke. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so, what, what would you say? Where are we in the Netherlands with that uh, ecosystem supporting agri food startups? Maybe you can the, elaborate. This, this was the, the, I think, the main question I asked myself in the first three months in this yeah. job because I thought, my goodness, all these ecosystem. I, I knew ecosystem <laughs> from Africa, where <laughs> you, you know you have antelope and lions yeah, yeah. and insects yeah. and, and fungi and everything works together, that's an ecosystem. Yeah. I've never thought of an ecosystem in the way we talk about ecosystems today. And, and so, and, and also our organization uh, was at quite a turnaround in, in the last 18 months. We had to answer this question as well. What is mm -hmm. uh, this food innovation ecosystem? Yeah. Um, and, and it's a very intangible thing. It, it's uh, it's an open thing. Um, there are a lot of um, uh, enablers like yourself, like us, a lot of entrepreneurs, uh, investors, knowledge centers. Uh, but uh, the way we view it, it's also very important to have very strong connections with um, other markets and other domains because most probably, and, and this is the, the, the tricky bit, a lot of the solutions are already out there mm. but being used in different industries. Um, like you said, you have an engineering background. Um, it's not said that all food and egg solutions have to come from food and egg, that they can come from materials or energy or pharmaceuticals or whatever. So we also uh, want to stay open-minded and, and get influenced by all these yeah. other innovations that are out there. Huh. But are we doing a good job in the Netherlands? The Dutch thing is to say no, 
Um, but I think we're on the right route. Um, there's a lot of... Um, when I started this position, I was amazed by the amount of money that it's available for entrepreneurship support. I'd run my company for 11 years. I never had one grant. I didn't know about all these programs, all these coaches. So I was amazed about the sheer amount of money, energy, people working just to support entrepreneurs in various phases, mm -hmm. doing matchmaking, helping them find their way uh, to, the, to the next level of their organization or their company. So um, there's a lot of efforts, but the way we look at it or I look at it is it's also very scattered. Mm -hmm. um, and um, in a lot of areas, people are doing quite similar jobs, but there's very little coherence, there's very little communication. Um, um, you know, the, all these, it struck me how many, how few entrepreneurs are involved with entrepreneurship support. It's very often people with different backgrounds who've never run a company for themselves. And they all often say those who can't teach. Oh. Um, so so um, it's also one of my goals to get more seasoned entrepreneurs involved because it's always easier and also more credible if an entrepreneur tells you, okay, maybe try this, then somebody who's oh. never faced a similar problem uh, themselves. So to answer your question, I think we're on the right path. Uh, but we've got a lot to gain by more cooperation, uh, better coordination, uh, but also using better metrics. Uh, we, we had this chat pre yeah. just before. Um, what is success in an ecosystem? How do you measure success? Um, is the amount of startups, is that relevant? Uh, is the amount of startups that become scale-ups uh, relevant? Very often it strikes me as odd that SMEs are left out of the equation uh, because a lot of companies will either disappear or end up as SMEs, which is fine. Uh, they, they play a role in the ecosystem. They provide jobs for uh, intelligent people. Uh, they may become a supplier to yeah. a fast growing scale up or uh, a corporate. So, um, yeah. Okay. Have I asked the same question to you? How are we doing in the Netherlands? Yeah. Um, well, for me, I've, I, I was running, I was working at a large tech company, then uh, moved to a medium-sized company, uh, became CEO there. So I kind of knew that. Mm -hmm. But startups, I tried to do, set up my own businesses after that. So that was really from scratch. This is the first time I'm really potentially inside that ecosystem that we're mm -hmm. talking about. Um, and for me, uh, what strikes me is that in the Netherlands, no, we're we're talking a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I, I sometimes miss the, you know, more pragmatic doers approach. You know, in in other countries, you hear for successful ideas or companies that are just onto <laughs> something really good, not like asking questions, but basically the question: What do you need? Uh, there's nothing uh, that has. Um, come close to that question that has been asked us. I consider myself kind of in a unique position and we have, we have potentially something big in our hands. I truly believe that. And that is also interesting because we're good in thinking and, and coming up with plans. And then, you know, we come where we're early stage, but could be big. So we have kind of a high valuation, mm -hmm. uh, very, uh, uh, capital intensive, but we don't have, you know, factories yet. So where do we fall? Yeah. Uh, so you start talking to, you know, the, the, the tech leaps of this world. They're saying, fantastic, but you're actually already a bit too far for us. Then you get to the next one. And then they're like, yeah, well, you're actually, it's very early stage what you're doing. Yeah. So we so can't really, really help. <laughs> yeah, it's like, okay. So, I, so, so, so where so, do you go then? I don't go. I, I do it myself, and that's. Yeah, that's but you, you get uh, funding in. You got uh, yeah, international you, partners. You, you go abroad. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the point. So you go abroad. Yeah. So for me, for funding, because yeah. uh, there's a couple of things where you can ask, you know, these mm -hmm. ecosystems. Because I think it's fantastic that you, as an entrepreneur or former founder or whatever, are in that seat. Because I think yeah. it's actually what what's missing. Someone that knows that itch. 
you know, I want to get things done and uh, let's not talk about it forever, but let's just do. And then maybe in a f after taking a few steps, you look back and, oh, well, we have to course correct a little bit, and, uh, but keep on going. So that's great. I think um, for me, for funding, it was quite similar. Um, you know, I've talked to, to some investors in the Netherlands and one of my goals was to, my big goal was to get the money in because I just want to make this into reality. My second goal was I would love to have, you know, the ownership stay in the Netherlands because I truly believe this can be a, a, a new, uh, you know, big thing for the, the, the BV Nederland, eh? the, 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 the Netherlands as a, as a, as a big company. So um, I didn't really succeed in that goal. I did get some great... Uh, you know, Jitsu uh, Groen, uh, some other uh, Dutch uh, investors on board. I'm super grateful for them. Mm -hmm. But I talked to, to others as well. And it's just, they were struggling with no. the dynamic I was just explaining. No. It's early stage, nice. but your but. Uh, the valuation is, is at a level which is no. healthy if you look at, at what it no. could be. Um, so why do other investors where you raise money from, from Luxembourg or whatever? Yeah, they're, they're asking the same question, but in the end it just comes down to are you risk adverse or not? Okay. So do you do? Yeah, because you they, they ask the same questions, so that's what you're saying. Yeah, right? yeah. ask the same questions. But, and it's, but they, it's, just, yeah, they say uh, yes at the end. <laughs> well, yeah, they, it, it is early stage. It is still, you know, uh, quite a big bet. And let's be honest about that. Uh, it, it could go wrong we don't believe it will but it, yeah, it could we don't have uh, have customers yet we don't have factories no, there no. No. so it's it's um there is a risk uh, involved uh, and then it just comes down to do you believe in the team do you believe in no. the in the plans and are you willing to take that no. risk and i just uh, um, um it, it was just typical that in the netherlands you uh, i talked to a lot of people and they were more no's than no. yeses no. and abroad uh more Yes, it's the yeah. Because this is uh, funny, because I, I, I wrote down, right, like we are top in the world on food agri, right? Uh, if we, uh, or at least that's what I uh, hear. <laughs> um, yeah, so, but is that really true? Because you're saying like, yeah, right, uh, one of the ways to be top is to get funding in that, well, that's one part maybe of the equation, right? But well, what is for, from your perspective, right? So we, we say, or people think we are, but maybe sometimes difficult to support maybe high R&D type companies, which are maybe two different, have a different valuation? On a knowledge level, yes, mm -hmm. we're talking. Okay. Um, Do you agree? Uh, I, I tend to agree. I, I We are kind of weird from that sense because we were born from a, a university hospital setting. So mm -hmm. from tissue yeah, engineering, yeah. so not from yeah. Wageningen yeah. or, yeah, so it's not a typical no, it's food. Not food not it's still knowledge it's from, from yeah. the Netherlands, right? Yeah. yeah, it's knowledge from the Netherlands, but it's not like automatically in an ecosystem where it's about yeah. food, uh, okay. et cetera. Yeah. So uh, I'm not in that environment directly, but I do tend to agree that, um, that we are on, from a knowledge perspective, you know, there's a lot of yeah. smart people in the Netherlands and from a heritage perspective and business, we're also very yeah, strong. Yeah, that's, yeah. I think, you know, no. the stuff in between and that's yeah, but, where startups. But I falling. think that this, this position can also lead to some limiting beliefs where mm -hmm. um, I think it was in my second or third month in, in, in this job and I spoke to this Indian uh, entrepreneur who had come up with a sensor technology that worked in rural, no. for rural farmers in, in India. And I was really excited because I recognize, you know, this entrepreneurship, entrepreneurial edge, and, and I thought, wow, he can really make a difference in his home market. Yeah. And he just wanted to get involved with the ecosystem, understand how in the Netherlands, because we, we, you know, we have a lot of fame in the world when it comes down to food and egg. And um, so I tried to connect him, and, and the response I, I mostly got was, well, we dealt with that type of technology 10 years ago. And so th there wasn't really a position for him to find. And, and I thought that that's odd because th if you really want to be leading in those worlds, you should find a way to get that knowledge that maybe five or 10 years ago we used and get it to this guy in India because yep. he can make a different plan. Yep. There's no way he's going to sell his sensors in the Netherlands, but that's not the point. If you want, if we want to be leading, you have to make sure that they get access to the knowledge. Exactly. Yeah. And think about how we can facilitate that. So I think that um, yes, we're leading, but that sometimes that 
also limits us. And, and also for very exciting companies, um, um, obstructs ways uh, to get funding. Yeah. Because we've seen the same idea 10 years ago and it didn't work then. Mm -hmm. But there's no proof whatsoever that if a more or less similar idea didn't work 10 years ago, yeah. it won't work now. Oh. And it can't have a large impact. Oh. Uh, a lot of the biggest companies we know in any industry weren't first movers. Um, so they had a great, very good look at what was happening and they found ways to optimize it, uh, have a better market fit, understand better what customers want, and then they excelled. So oh. um, I think sometimes being ahead actually slows us down sometimes. Okay. So. Uh, but then moving forward right towards the growth of the company right so i'm just thinking uh, like m does it can it have to do with something like you come from or the company that comes from let's say uh, uh, tissue uh, science which then is transferred into right food industry which, which is maybe a different right uh, flow of of how knowledge flows or or how, uh, so you don't you don't really fit in a sort of box and therefore are not i don't know whatever supported by do you think that is the case in, in the agri-food or is it just in general that right, we are pretty good in the early stages supporting and then at the moment when someone says, yeah, now we need to raise above 20, 30 million, and then all the people in the in the sector here says, uh, yeah, okay, uh, yeah, good luck. <laughs> uh, that, I think it, come, it comes down to a couple of things. Uh, first of all, and I found this really odd, support for entrepreneurs is always uh, pretty generic. It's in programs, it starts once or twice a year, you have cohorts of mm -hmm. maybe eight or 10 uh, people. So it's very um, supply driven. Mm -hmm. Whereas we teach our entrepreneurs, you know, you have to be demand driven. What is it that your customers want? And that, that's also what Marta says, you know, we don't fit in a box, yeah. but it doesn't really matter which box oh. you fit in. It's what do you need to excel? And then you should configure your support to what those companies need in. It yeah. doesn't matter if you, you know, if a, a startup can be a startup for 10 years, but in, in a lot of, you know, uh, definitions, they say, no, it's a yeah. younger than three years, so many uh, employees, uh, so much um, um, turnover or no turnover. Uh, but by, by trying to define it and creating that box, mm -hmm a lot also fall, falls outside that box. So um, I think we, you should look at what can you deliver uh, in a generic, scalable way to entrepreneurs and facilitate that access uh, easily 24-7, 365 days a year. And where do you have to really come up with custom solutions? Yep. And, and then in the Netherlands sometimes, you know, with the Staatsteun, uh, rules, it also becomes difficult because, you know, uh, especially capital intensive companies, you can only yeah, get 200,000 K yeah. in three years. And yeah, I, I sometimes feel, you know, it's not that this entrepreneur is trying to use the system yeah. for his own benefits. They want to uh, propel an innovation. Yeah. And then we have this rule that prevents us from getting support to that entrepreneur yeah. and everybody says no we believe in it and so at the end of the day we can pay 10 people to talk to that entrepreneur like you say but we can't give them half a million yeah. for the next step yeah. but these 10 people also cost half, half a million, million. Yeah. so it, it sometimes frustrates me yeah. that we we don't find the the pragmatic entrepreneurial ways to support entrepreneurs and and only the yeah, more it's, yeah, they're, they're all people with good intentions, but sometimes you have to kind of, okay, what's really going yeah. on here? Yeah, and the, yeah but yeah. again, and that's what I, maybe the point, like if we are want to be the best in the food agri part, and I think from the research side, we are right of also, if you look at the crop things that they're doing in uh, uh, here uh, in, uh, in Desland. Um, yeah, right, we are there. But the problem is when a company grows or at least has the potential to grow, then, then um yeah, then funding is is searched somewhere else or maybe next steps. Because what do you think if you look at, for example, from a market perspective, where 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 will your first 
market's entry be? Do you think? Or yeah, maybe that, that's happened? that's that's uh, uh, in our case, it's kind of specific because it's driven by where are we allowed to sell first. Okay. So it's yep. it's a regulatory approval is key here, uh, but that's also something where the Netherlands and Europe, mm -hmm. because here the Netherlands is part of Europe. Uh, should watch out because uh, other parts of the world are a lot more pragmatic. Yeah. In our case, um, there are two places in the world where cultured meat has a path to market, meaning there is a process where it can be mm -hmm. approved. Yeah. In the Netherlands, this is called, uh, or in the Europe, this is called the novel food procedure. Um, and now a lot of countries in the world have certain processes, but not yet for cultured meat. The only other place is Singapore. And the difference between those two processes is just uh, quite striking. Um, where just if you look at the timelines, it's about assessing whether a food is safe or not for yep. human uh, consumption. Yeah. Uh, in Europe, it's 18 to 24 months if everything goes well. And in uh, Singapore, it's three to six months. months yeah. You know, we're both assessing, they're yep. both assessing safety. So why should it take, you know, three, four, five times longer? Yep. I don't know. <laughs> so that, just thinking about that um, indicates that there are some challenges here. And you know, in my company, I once I can produce, I'm going to sell. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and that means probably that Singapore is going to be a, a, a candidate f sooner. What does that mean? I'm gonna, not going to produce everything here and no. then ship no, it. No, ship it. You're going to do that. No, I'm yeah. going to move over there. Yeah. If, no. And that's 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 a shame for Europe or for the Netherlands. But yeah. that's the way uh, you know. I want to make impact, yeah. and I want to sell uh, cultured meat hamburgers. And whether I can prevent a cow from being raised and slaughtered in Singapore, or wherever they're getting their meat from, yeah. or in the Netherlands, you know, it's equal to me. Um, of course, my Dutch heart. I uh, would yeah. like to have it here, and I also like to visit my family. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that's yeah. basically um, a message uh, for for Europe yeah. uh, that we should which we should say. Um, yeah. But what do you think? Yeah. Or is it is is this the problem? Maybe for um, yeah, maybe it's for all food stuff, right? Because you're making yeah food when it's a novel food. Th then okay, what is novel food? I understand a bit, but yeah. you know what I mean. Uh, it, it's all the food or food ingredients for which there is not a regulatory box, okay. so yeah. to speak, yet. Um, but why can't you say it's meat? Uh, that's the whole discussion. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, again, again, this has to do with with what is the product, what's in it. Yeah. Uh, and Proteins. how did how did you how did you produce it? Yeah. Uh, and how do you pr how did you produce it? And what are uh, you know processing aids that have been used? And how do you uh, make sure that nothing ends up in the final yeah. product? Because it's, can you it's all fine. Well, that's because that's difficult. It? That's different from meat. In yeah. the end, if we are accepted to become or uh, safe, yeah. then there's another part of the process where it's about labeling. So mm -hmm. that's a whole different topic. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of in the same process, yeah. but. Uh, this is just for for safety, no. and I'm talking about. And so, then, so how, how how does it work? Because I didn't ask. Our, our yeah, I'm actually quite curious. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the magic. So we we take uh, a sample from a living animal. Yeah. So through a biopsy, so we get you know half a uh, half a gram of uh, muscle tissue yep. out of their butt, um, and uh, then we isolate the cell population that we want to use. We put it into our. Uh, a bioreactor system where it's like a like a, a, a vessel in which you brew beer. Yeah. It's very similar to brewing beer. So you put it in there, you put it into a, a mixture of nutrients. Yeah. And these this is basically all plant-based ingredients. It's a long list and it's a special cocktail. Yeah. And this cocktail mimics or lets the cell cells think that they're yeah. still inside the animal. Yeah. So and then start dividing. And then they start multiplying. Yeah. So or that's called yeah. proliferation. Yeah. So we get one cell, uh, you can make billions and billions of cells. Yeah. And then we harvest those cells, put them in the next vessel, and we stimulate them slightly differently. So the cells that are still loose cells at first become a form yeah. muscle, muscle tissue. tissue. And in a another vessel, we have fat tissue. Yeah. And in the end, you have muscle fibers, fat, fat fibers. Yeah. You, have fat fibers. you yeah. mix them, you have mincemeat. Yeah. That's it. So actually, I would say pretty simple. 
Uh, well, uh, right. Yeah. Uh, and, and so where I would, would you say is the magic? Is it in that first mix of how they are able to... It's in both uh, those, those vessels yeah. and the, the, the way you need to stimulate them. So that has to do with all the nutrients. It's really a, a long list yeah. where, where the magic is in letting the cells do their yeah. natural yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, so you mimic a cow, basically, yeah. a cow's body. That's, and that's not only the nutrients, it's temperature, it's, it's uh, stimulating the, the, the cells, uh, how to grow, uh, and, and they need something to snap, to cling on to, yeah. and there's all sorts of um, factors. And we're, we're going to work that out, and we're doing that step by step, of course, yeah. moving to larger yeah. vessels. Yeah. Because is, is that also a problem? Scaling up, yeah. The, I mean, like technology, so, so. not only the company, but uh, <laughs> yeah. doing it, doing it in bit bigger yeah. vessels. Yeah, because that's, it's, that's, it's that's not like challenge. cooking. You put the same uh, amounts, and then no. Think about you know if you have a a, a small pan yeah. and you put in I don't know uh, some some ingredients. Some parts sink to the bottom. Yeah. Others, you know, and there's weight involved. If you do a, a uh, large vessel, you know, they start to press on each other. Yeah. And, and then the, if the you add some change. salt yeah. here, how do you make you sure that that the cells okay. in the bottom yeah. reach it? Yeah. It's really uh, about um, you know, and, and those are practical challenges, yeah. and we just have to figure and out, figure them out, and tweak everything. But that means you know, three steps forward, one step back. And uh, th that's a process yeah. that takes time. Is there any other, I would say, large-scale pr uh, growth issue, and, and not the company, <laughs> like in that in that process of of getting into a factory where you can produce X amount of, of meat? Yeah, th there's there's tons of uh, challenges, and it, in the end, it's about how can you produce something that is um, uh, affordable. Yeah. So it's all about the cost of goods. You yeah. know, we've shown that we can produce a hamburger. Yeah many years Let's ago. Go. Now it's about producing billions of hamburgers at a reasonable cost. Yeah. And then you have to basically take into account, uh, you know, three things. What's the cost of the nutrients? Yeah. So the stuff that goes into the system, and these are different crops, different uh, active ingredients, like for beer you need yeast. Yeah. We have similar type, type of, of uh, uh, active yeah. ingredients called growth factors. Uh, that's something you put in. So what's the cost of of, of the input, then how efficient are you in converting that into meat? Like the cow has 15%, yeah. we need to be much more uh, efficient, efficient than a cow. Yeah. Uh, and then the third one is the, the, the piece of machinery you do it in, what's the capex that's, yeah. uh, that's yeah. required? Because you can have a very cheap input and great conversion, but if you need a billion, billion euro, <laughs> yeah. uh, you still need some money to convince people to buy it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So it's 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 those three factors, yeah. and they all come with with their own challenges. Yeah. yeah. So uh, um, moving forward, also with I would say the in the end, right? So we're we're saying you you produce these hamburgers, right? And yep. I think this is also a question for you. Like, if you look at it from a distribution perspective. Um, how would that be for you in a later stage, right? Go to so market distribution, you mean? Yeah. yeah. How would that look? Yeah, no, that, uh, there's a couple of phases. In the beginning, you know, we're going to start selling, we're producing ourselves, yeah. uh, and then uh, we're going to build first factories, and then, yeah. you know, there's, there's along the line that the technology and the production technology develops, yeah. you run into different possibilities where initially we're going to produce ourselves, but we need a wider ecosystem to get it to market. So depending on where we can sell, we already have partners that can bring it to market. Yep. Initially, it's going to be a restaurant type of yep. channel. Later on, we want to you know, also move into retail yep. and just anywhere where we can be but, next but, to the and, and, knaller. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> but, 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 but let's say Mozambique. Yeah, no, that's, that's the next part. So first, uh, this is going to be a relatively premium product. Yeah. It's new, it's, mm -hmm. it's uh, not abundant in, in how many we can produce. So we're going to most likely uh, brand it, yeah. whether it's Mosa Meat or another yeah. brand name that's uh, close to it. Thanks. Next phase, we will have more and then we'll move into that other people can produce for so, us. So that is, you know, under licensing or whatever uh, type of uh, con um, construction or agreement we do it. Uh, and then, you know, in the end, I want to be a commodity. Yeah. I want to be uh, in the Big Mac. I want to be next to the Kilo Because yeah, yeah. uh, we want to make yeah. impact. Yeah, because and, like uh, uh, McDonald's uses Fales, I think, for their chicken, uh, uh, like vegetarian chicken burger or something. Yeah, the, the one they just uh, uh, announced. No, I think that you can already buy it. Like they, they okay. use a... Uh, uh, plant-based. Yeah, plant-based or yeah. protein-based, yeah. uh, uh, and they they co-branded with the 
with it. But I think it was far fa less, I think, for that. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not quite okay. sure. But, yeah. yeah. So, so um, is that your... Uh, I would say, yeah, branding say strategy. Your, your, that's, yeah. It's to, to, I, I, wanna, I want my meat to be in that burger. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah, that's for sure. But and then, it, then it's like, okay, if, it's if most it's, meat, put it yeah, there, that, or that, McDonald's put it there. That's for me not, not, not yeah. a goal. Huh. Um, but, you know, if there's like Intel inside yeah. uh, type of branding yeah. or a Mosa uh, huh. meat okay. uh, type yeah. of branding yeah. or no branding, that's, that's to be decided. Huh. Yeah. Because if then going to you also looking at other types of, I would say, agri-food startups that are here um, uh, in the Netherlands, but also wanting to um, to grow. What I found is that um, after you, you got this boom of companies that, uh, for example, said, hey, we have like HelloFresh uh, or Crisp that does a different thing or yeah, Picnic is different. but And I, I think like, yeah, it's nice that all these companies are growing and doing everything themselves. But in the end, they they set up own distribution channels, right? So in your street, you have like five, six cars every day, right? Running, doing that part, um, with uh, and not not looking so much at maybe the the yeah, yep. the, 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 the distribution channels which are there. So what is there? The I don't have a concrete question, but what is there your idea about? Um, is that a good thing or not? Should be uh, yeah. Use those. Uh, I, if I can yeah, respond sure. for my case, you know, I think it's 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 interesting. I see it as well, but it's not only startups that are doing it. No. I see DHL, yeah, UPS, yeah, yeah. everyone yeah. is driving in the same. So it's it's just a matter of you know how's market dynamics going on and how are then uh, companies becoming more efficient. So first you tap into the demand and then you yeah. start to, to optimize your operation, I guess. For us, we want to be pragmatic. So we're already working together. Some of our investors are food processing companies, yeah. even meat processors. And we just want to use their infrastructure okay. because yeah. that's already there. Yeah, yeah, Why yeah. not use it? You know, for the longer term, our technology could enable uh, production in the Sahara yeah. or in the, in the basement of this building. Yeah. So that's a completely new distribution model. Great, fantastic, but let's first see how we can get okay. stuff to market quickly. And then you just leverage what's out there. And in the current uh, uh, system, there's already, you know, under there's capacity available. Yeah. So uh, I want to use that. Yeah. From your side, like, is distribution an issue or is it? Uh, well, apparently not, because otherwise uh, they would have found a different model yeah. already. No, uh, maybe also the other companies you see, right, which you work with. Mm -hmm. No, I, I don't really recognize it as a problem. Um, and I agree with Marta that you see this multitude of, of companies who all have a different approach to basically a, a similar problem no. or customer demand. Um, and some of them will stay, some of them will merge. Uh, some of them will form consortia. Uh, just look at Just Eat Takeaway. A couple of years ago, everybody was saying, uh, you have uh, Deliveroo yeah. and uh, yeah, the other one, the, one with the Kangaroo, yeah. uh, Foodora, yeah, yeah. and, uh, and, and uh, Thuis Bezorgd. And you see, no, one doesn't make it, the other one purchases the other, then yeah. you have two left. So I've, I think the same will happen with Crisp and Picnic and Eco Menu and Boerschappen. And, um, but, but for now, I think we should focus on the positives and that's that there is a lot of interest in companies finding new routes to market and yep. finding new ways to get very often fresh produce locally uh, grown to, and, and actually people want to pay for it. Yep. Uh, so I, I think that's also part of the food transition. And at the end, it will be, become more efficient and there will be uh, more pressure on, on the price eventually when there are more uh, suppliers and, and then the market will do its magic, uh, I guess. Oh. Yeah. And um, if, if you look at that, uh, maybe a sort of trick question, like uh, if you look at efficiency of food production, a little bit broader topic, um, I think it's more efficient to put one really big factory somewhere and make the distribution channels really efficient, and then it's more efficient than producing all this stuff here locally and and right oh, and, and setting that up. Depends. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah. Nice. Why yeah. does it? On it what does it, it depends depend? on 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 the the specific value chain you're looking at. Where where does your input come from, mm -hmm. and where are your customers? Yeah. 
you know, if if I was always amazed by, you know, flowers uh, like 20 years ago that produced in Kenya, they all go through Alzmeer and then ship back to wherever part of the world. It's like, this is like, like I think 90, at its peak, it was 96% of all flowers or something in the world went through. Went through uh, yeah. Gosh, but uh, um, I was saying that I, I, I don't know if they actually physically all went through it, but yeah. at least yeah. uh, there was, a, uh, there was yeah. some efficiency there yeah. um, uh, and also inefficiency. Yeah. Um, um, so it depends. And for my technology, yes, I'm focusing on putting some bigger manufacturing plants somewhere because I think that's where the biggest steps can be made. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also, you know, I think a, a balance between market demand. Uh, look at beer. You know, you could supply the Netherlands with one beer factory. Why not? Yeah. But people have a preference for different flavors, for different brands. For yeah. uh, So there's a Heineken big factory and there are all sorts of smaller factories, uh, and microbreweries. I think the same could apply for my technology. Yeah. Some big factories and some, and I see a, a, a spot for farmers here. Yeah. They're already part of the ecosystem. System, yeah. uh, they have, you know, now are sourcing feed for their animals. Yeah. Why not for the cells? Yeah. And, and you know, I, I see they can add their own special yeah, flavor. And then they have, uh, yeah. Yeah, then they they're, have they're, uh, their uh, craftsmanships yeah. uh, there. And, and I see, uh, but, but that's a bit further down the line. But uh, I see that happening as well. But, but there's yeah, definitely yeah, never black and white. efficiency to be gained. Uh, one of the things we do, I have a colleague with a whole team on shared facilities, and they're doing exactly this. They're, they're looking for that access in, for instance, in, in, in proteins, mm -hmm. uh, which facilities, which research equipment, which pilot plants are there, and can we unlock these um, so that startups and scale-ups have, can have access to these uh, facilities. So if you have a production line that runs, I don't know, for four days a week and it's not running one day a week, can we book startups on that one day so they can have a pilot run? Yeah. Uh, so that's part of, of the ecosystem we're trying to build. Uh, and, and we now have an interactive protein map. Next one, we're bu uh, building one for insects. Uh, so for all these relatively new industries, we're looking where are there, where is their access? Yeah. Uh, which isn't being used, and how can we effectively and um, make this available for for the ecosystem? And, and it sounds really easy, but it, it's quite difficult because you have all these regulations, you have all these. Yeah, but you are actually solving a problem for the entrepreneur. That's and it. That's in a very pragmatic way. So yeah. that's, I think, a very yeah. good one. But we even have budget to to co-fund a certain piece of equipment. Then when a, a company says, "Okay, we need this." machine, but we only use it 25% of the time, yeah. we can co-invest and then make it available for the ecosystem. So, so these are um, yeah, things Food Valley is, is yeah. trying to do for the ecosystem to, to make sure that these thresholds of boundaries, exactly. or bottlenecks yeah. for growth are, are because reduced, yeah. Because I think that food innovation in itself and people working on it, I think that is um, already um, I would say top of mind of people, right? People like to see how they contribute by maybe yeah, looking at different ways of how we how we deal with agri and, and food. Um, question? Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, but, but, but you see that uh, at the end of the day, somebody explained this to me a couple of months ago and, and, and he said in the, in the 80s and 90s, all these big corporates had their own very big R&D facilities. And that's where you know mm -hmm. they spent a lot of money, and it didn't have to, you know, uh, they didn't need a return on on their investment right away. And then, and then, you know, the shareholder value became a thing, and then they say oh, R and D is very expensive, and also take some of these inefficiency out of our model. And and fast forward twenty years later, you know, we don't have these. Um, massive amounts of R and D centers, and and. Um, so there are certain topics which aren't anybody's problem at the no. moment. There's nobody picking up the tap, and, and that's where governments come out, and there's where foundations like ours come in to try to recognize, okay, where, where are these, we call them market failings, mm -hmm. yeah. and, and how can we solve them? Yeah. And, and we, tr we try to get uh, commercial companies involved, because at the end of the day, when IP is 
uh, produce or when um, um, a successful startup or scale up is developed very often it's corporates who then purchase these and and you know reap the benefits of, of what the ecosystem has produced yeah. uh, but also uh, governments play a very important role in this and then you see that in the Netherlands uh, local regional and, and national governments uh, are willing to chip in quite a bit to help solve these problems not always in the least most efficient ways yet yeah. but we're getting there yeah. okay so um, maybe last uh, topic um, marketing the marketing side of things right so uh, um, a lot of times it's also i think that in the end and you are still you're already able to produce it right you're able to produce very small things, quantities but, yeah. but yeah uh, we're not selling yeah no no but at least yeah, we have something um but then i would say the, the difficulty part starts with getting adoption of people using it etc right where and from that side you see a lot of times it's also about marketing of 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 things right so um, eating insects, it's crazy that we don't eat insects here, I would say, in, in the Western world. Uh, and in other countries they do, and it's totally fine, I think mainly in Asia. So, um, what is from your perspective is, is the main problem there? Is, is it marketing or is that going to be your biggest issue? later on? Well, I think, first of all, it's, it's very important to, um, to acknowledge that food is extremely emotional and yeah. highly exactly. cultural. Yeah. Yeah. So you shouldn't uh, try to come up with a marketing plan and think it works mm -hmm. worldwide. Um, so you need to kind of, in our case, we're investigating what, what countries are receptive to this yeah. type of food. And also within that's countries. Also the Netherlands, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And also within countries, yeah. of course, what target groups eh? we see uh, early adapters, blah, yeah. blah, blah. And you see um, there's definitely, we have some tailwinds all over the world, but there's big differences. Yeah. Uh, just in Europe alone, you know, the f further down south you go, the higher the amount of disposable income people spend on their food gets, yeah. and the more emotional, and yeah. the more, yeah. it's, it's, it becomes a bigger thing. Uh, and people are generally, it's moving in the right direction, but less receptive to drastic changes. Yeah. Uh, the further up north, it's easier. Yeah. And in the Netherlands, uh, for, for this technology, we see a very positive trend and over 50% is already willing to, to give it a try, yeah. which, is, which is good. Yeah. And uh, in the end, with food, it's also, uh, it, it's those components, it, it's, it's, it's emotional, it's cultural, but also, you know, it's about does it taste good? And is the price okay? <laughs> so it's yeah. as simple yeah. as that. <laughs> so that, that's something you have to um, think about uh, and then define your marketing strategy. So what's your initial target group? How do you develop in each country towards the masses? What, what are the main uh, messages you want to get across? Uh, and here we have tailwinds, you know, the fact that people are more concerned with the environment, with uh, they're, they're more connecting it to the choices they make when eating something, they're more aware that meat consumption actually has, a, has consequences. Yeah. Uh, you know, all the plant-based meat alternatives that are popping up and gaining momentum, that's great. And that's paving the way for us. Uh, I think it's fantastic how much attention they're getting. Yeah. For me, uh, I think that the, the, the sales are a bit behind and I hope they're, they're sticky. So there's repeat sales and not just curiosity sales. Uh, uh, happening. That's my concern there, but it also is a is is for me a validation that our product is more convincing because it, it yeah. is meat. So we can be the next version there, yeah. or actually next to it, because I believe, like you were also indicating, that it's not an an all or nothing. It's a multiple yeah. uh, solutions game. Yeah, and because uh, yeah. that's a question that popped into my head. Like, do you also see ad adjacent industries popping up for for the things that you are uh, doing? Yeah, or of course. What, what, what can those be? Of course, in, in, for in, in the fact that we are now using certain ingredients yeah. that are only, uh, were only produced for pharmaceutical uh, uh, goals. Well, we don't need, uh, in very small quantities, very high quality. We yeah. don't need that quality, but no. we need big quantities big yeah, yeah. and low prices. Yeah, yeah. So you see completely new approaches on how to develop certain functional ingredients. Yeah. Um, that are that are trying to achieve yeah. that. And, and how are you going to? How, how are you already trying to in, integrate them into your? Uh, well, we're working together yeah. with a lot of them. 
So uh, because that's also ecosystem, right? So that's also yeah. what you you yeah. what will help you in. Yeah, and that's where we we kind of uh, for each um, challenge you often ask yourself, okay. Do we want to do this ourselves? Build up the capability is just strategically important, or do we want a partner, or do we want you know a phased approach? And in the beginning, we'll do a lot of the value chain, you know, uh, developing a lot of the knowledge because it's just not out there, and a lot of the, the, yeah. the stuff we need, we're developing some hardware parts ourselves, and then in the end, uh, we're doing some marketing ourselves and go to market because we want to control that narrative. Uh, yeah. uh, but in the end, you know, there will be specialization. If it becomes bigger, it makes more sense. You know, where is our core capability? Let's focus on that and leave the other stuff to others. Yeah. But that's you know how businesses often evolve, uh, and that's probably going to happen here. But uh, we'll see. Yeah. But as, as the category matures, that will happen, yeah. And, yeah. and you will get. Yeah, but that's also for the ecosystem to support, right? In in that to try yeah. to stimulate that. How, how do you? What, what are there things that you are seeing? Um. Well, well, first of all, in, in, it depends on, on which part of the food transition you, you look at, because uh, there are um, plant-based meats, for, uh, alternatives, for example, that are more mature. So you also see, let's say, more traditional investors coming in and, and um, understanding what's going on and, and yeah. putting a lot of money on the table. Family offices, who, who normally would be well, quite conservative, uh, are now... Uh, approaching that, that category and in other parts, for example, personalized nutrition, which is a whole other part of the food transition, it, it's very scattered and, and very immature. Um, and we also try to, we, we have identified four innovation themes, uh, protein shift, circular agri-food, food and health, and then smart and digital tech actually combines yep. the, the three. Uh, we have innovation leads on, on those and they're main purpose is finding the biggest challenges within these specific domains and seeing how can we build projects, programs, consortia to not help a single company, no. but help the value chain. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and um, so, for example, for personalized nutrition, it's writing a global position paper on what is personalized nutrition, because some people think personalized nutrition is having your name on, on a Coke can. <laughs> Um, and others think it's it's biosensors and and getting advice yeah. maybe from your toilet yeah. uh, on which nutrients you're lacking. Yeah. And um, but um, and and for protein shift, um, our innovation lead is is building what he calls a protein pathways to other parts of the world where the um, for example in India, uh, 75. 70 percent uh, is vegetarian yeah. um, their protein shift is a different protein shift than yeah, ours here. Yeah. Uh, and, and building that pathway of knowledge of yeah. companies of innovations can be beneficial for uh, for both markets so yeah. and it really depends on which micro challenge you're tapping into and 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 to come back to to the marketing question um, I totally agree with Martin that we see a lot of uh, of these companies start with an innovation and they actually start with a solution yep. that I haven't really identified which problem they're solving for whom yet. And if you don't answer that question, you can't market your product. And, and so they spend a lot of time in the beginning, rightly so, developing their technology. But at some point they have to start asking the question, who am I going to sell it for? And what is their main objective to buy? And then they also have to become a bit more reflective because the reasons you started your company might not be the reasons why somebody buy your exactly, product. Yeah. Uh, because sustainability and animal welfare is, sadly to say, uh, not a number one reason to no. buy. Uh, I ran a coffee company. The coffee wasn't the first reason people no, came no, in. No, no. They wanted to meet friends. No. They wanted to have an enjoyable time. Um, and understanding this is it plays a major role in, in which companies are going to succeed and, and which ones are not. So you can have the best technology if you don't figure out who you're, uh, whose problem you're solving or whose uh, eagerness you're, you're uh, tapping into, then, then you can fill the end. So yeah. nice. that's also what we try to, we support a couple of uh, entrepreneurship programs where we try to emphasize on, on this specific skill, which is a completely exactly. different yeah. skill than uh, biotech or food tech or tech. Yeah. 
So where are you or well, uh, Food Valley, Health Valley? Come on. <laughs> in in five years. We cooperate with Health yeah. Valley as well. Mm. Where you want to be? Maybe that's a better question. Um, it will definitely be a lot more international than now. Uh, we recently joined up with World Economic Forum as well to become a food innovation hub. Um, also to spread knowledge and, and, and create uh, global connections. Uh, currently, we're also building a platform um, which should enable entrepreneurs to find these connections they didn't know they need, uh, because very often solutions are somewhere where you don't expect them. No. Yeah. Um, and, and we've identified that entrepreneurs spend a lot of time finding their way through the ecosystem, so we try to make this easier by giving you a list of, of these are the 10 most relevant investors or the, this piece of knowledge is what your peers also uh, is. Um, and well, hopefully uh, we have shifted our focus in our innovation themes a bit because we've solved some of the challenges in, in, uh, in our current uh, themes. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, hopefully we, we can state in, in five years from now that the Netherlands really is a world-class entrepreneurial ecosystem, ecosystem yeah. where we um, have role models which can also um, and we have a couple now but I, I think there are they're not recognized as much as they they should be and and they can also play a very important part in in further uh, maturing the ecosystem and I think it's a great example that people like Jitze Groen uh, are and they've become successful they're investing back yeah. in into the Dutch ecosystem yeah. And um, uh, hopefully a lot, a lot more will follow. And maybe a couple of Bitcoin billionaires can tap in as well. Yeah, I think that will be good to, uh, yeah. to solve. How is that for you? Where Five years you? from yeah. now? Well, uh, our hamburgers are available. Yeah. How, in, how much? In, in, in different countries. Yeah. Okay. How much countries? No, how, how, much? Much, how much can I buy it for? Any, do you think? Uh, it depends on which restaurant you go to. <laughs> okay, expense, no, the, the first, uh, yeah, let's say, yeah, uh, expensive uh, restaurant. Well, uh, the, in the beginning, afterwards, it slowly goes down yeah. as the cost of goods go, goes down. But uh, in five years from now, we should be available maybe already in the first supermarkets, um, hmm. different continents, uh, and most of meat. Five is so fast? That's our goal. Yeah. Yeah. We're aiming to bring it to market in 2023. It all depends on regulatory mm -hmm. approval. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, and then it's a matter of, you know, we already have identified the markets and the target group. There is a significant target group waiting for this. The goal is the, the group that comes yeah. afterwards, the, the, the masses, mm -hmm. but the first 20% is already there. And then it, it's a matter of, you know, executing the go-to-market. Yeah. So uh, restaurant channel, different geographies, retail, and that should be yeah. five years from now. Because what are your competitors? And it's another question. The, your competitors doing? Well, there's, you know, w what is basically our, also our in competition? Five years, maybe. It, it depends on what you define as competition. You know, there are other companies that have started with cultured meat or cultured mm -hmm. fish. Yeah. There's now like 70 or 80. And there's already, you know, picks and shovels type mm -hmm. of companies yeah, yeah. popping up, yeah. focusing on growth factors yeah. or other types of yeah. equipment. Um, people are focusing on different uh, species, on different, um, you know, technologies, including uh, GMO or not. We, yep. We're doing it mm -hmm. without yep. focusing on beef. We have that's our play. Uh, great. I wish them all well. Mm -hmm. I yeah, wanna, of course. I want to go to increase yeah, the uh, our, our real yeah. competition yeah. is is you know uh, factory animal uh, <laughs> farming, yeah. um, uh, where I see there's a there's a place for all the competition or all our yeah. competitors. I think plant based is doing great. Uh, I see there's a place for them as well. Yeah. The market is big enough. It's yeah. it's yeah, increased course. with it's fifty yeah. percent yeah. in yeah. the next yeah. twenty years, and it's already a, a trillion dollar plus market. So we have That's still a very small percentage of. If if you take yeah. meat consumption into yeah. account, uh, so uh, 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 yeah, yeah, no, it's there, there's so much growth potential, and and that will happen, and um, you know we're just going to focus on on execution, because time is our biggest enemy, yeah, and that's that's what we uh, we need to focus on. Yeah, yeah. All right, thanks guys, thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks. And, uh, thanks for having yeah. us. Yeah, great to have some. Uh, yeah, I would say great Dutch company 
uh, making this this step. And hopefully next time when we're here, we we get someone who says, no, no, I got it from, uh, I got 50 million in from some Dutch investors, uh, which uh, yeah, well, we'll, great. we'll uh, we have some great ones already on our, yeah, on our course, yeah. but uh, yeah. All right. I hear Thanks what you're saying. Yeah. Thanks. Yep. Thanks.